Yeah. Okay, this is from Yao Ming. Yao from Ming. Michael. Yao oh. Ming Roberto, my cousin. Yum. Okay, what is your... What's his daughter's name? Ah, uh, Samara. Hi, Samara. Sam Sami. Love ya. Okay, so from Yao Ming, what is your memorable or unforgettable moment with your family or with your parents? Okay, me first and then your next. Oh, he's asking okay, about I, my I don't parents. know. I don't okay. know if... Sure, you, well, you first. Then. Yao Ming, I don't know who you're asking me or him, but I'll, we're answering both. Um, I think my unforgettable memory with my parents is whenever was was right was was yeah it's yeah, past, past tense so was uh, going to Pentecostal church yeah mm. yeah that must have been fashion forward it's a good memories. So I love, I love. So those are most memorable or good memories. Which what is this question? So his question is, what is your memorable or unforgettable moment with your so family? It doesn't have to be good. Or with your yeah. yeah okay, so I but well, I to make sure I was on target. Okay. <laughs> so what what about you? My unforgettable moment. Unforgivable, you said. Unforgettable. Oh, okay. Unforgettable. Yeah, my unforgettable moment would be when. My mother threw a 20 pound weight across the room. What is that? You know, a dumbbell you exercise <gasps> with. Oh my God, a Jew? No, not at me. Not at me. Uh, I also remember. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How old are you when it happened? I don't know. Like, were you in grade uh, school or? What is grade school? I'm six years old to 12 years old. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in that area. Yeah, because I hadn't died yet at that point. So, oh my God. Uh, also in the same time point in my life, between ages 6 and 12, I remember crashing, stealing my brother's car, and then crashing into the neighbor's truck. And then going in the house to tell my parents that I had just stole a car oh my. and crashed it to the people who lived next door. <laughs> Oh my and so God. I remember standing there as my parents were arguing about what to do with me and where to hide the body. And then all of a sudden, I was flipped upside down and laying on the floor. And I remember that like yesterday. Oh my God, you're crazy. Well, that's what I remember the most. Oh my God. How old are you? Uh, How old were you? I, well, see, I, I was probably nine or ten. Oh my God. Well, yeah, who should be stealing cars at ten? It just yeah. makes no sense. But, you know. It, you know, you're was, the keys were right there and no one was watching so and okay. I wanted to learn how to drive and I did learn how to drive so I may have got slapped and, and thrown to the ground about it but I learned how to drive oh so my it god kind of worth it mommy wants to slap your oh, face no. no no dad oh my god yeah. oh my god yeah. he was That's able so to pick funny. me up with one hand slap me with one hand and lift me with the other and throw me oh to the ground god. and then told me don't move and I was like so I still remember that oh my god yeah <laughs> I never challenged that guy. Yeah, oh I remember my God. That yesterday. Don't mess up with me, diary. I remember the carpet and laying there. I remember laying there and then my other brother thinking that I was dead because I was trying not to move because <laughs> dad said yeah. don't move. And I was looking from the corner of my eye and I could see what was going on. I was on my mom's feet here. I saw my dad walk out to go deal with the neighbor. And then I saw my other brother poke his little head out from oh the, the stairs. And, and then and what happened? Did he solve the problem? I'm sure they fixed the guy's yeah, car yeah. and all that stuff, so, and, and I wasn't able to drive in on our street. But I think later mess. I was driving again. It's crazy. Okay. I think I got a car shortly thereafter. That my own car, <laughs> like, as a matter of fact. Like nigga, here's your car. Yeah, so I got, I got my <laughs> own car. car. Yeah. So. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go, Yao Ming. It's a good one. Okay. Next question from Yao Ming as well. Um, who's your favorite cousin? Ooh. <laughs> who's your favorite cousin? Oh, you gotta answer the question. Ask the question. Maybe the guy who's asking this question, I guess. Mm. <laughs> so, might as well you ask this question. <laughs> oh, Asian fingers, I'm sorry. Yeah. So. <laughs> where am I? What, what, no, my phone slides. So, yeah, I think that's you, Michael. Yes, Michael. Mm -hmm. You, Samara. Yes, Samara's a cousin too, right? In this whole hierarchy of family, that everyone's your uncle and, and grandma. So no. that means that Samara would be a cousin too, or is she no, really? No, she, she she's my 
His niece, girl. Yeah, niece. Niece. Girl. She, she's my niece. Okay, yeah. so you guys don't elevate her to cousin because yeah. she's a cousin status. Yeah, but yeah. But yeah, how yeah. come your uncle could be your grandfather then? I don't understand. Hi, that. baby. Just forget about it because it's kind of hard to explain. But anyway, what about you? Who's your favorite cousin? Uh, Michael. Thanks, Michael, for asking this question. Asian fingers for you, buddy. <laughs> so now oh, you do have to be spread like this for the Asian fingers to count. There's there's this uh, thing that I always see that Korean. This is oh, like yeah. a heart. Yeah, this yeah. Doesn't look like a heart. To it me. looks like a heart to me. Anyway, so you know, a heart actually this looks is... like this. It's like a big wad of meat. Yeah. Oh, you know what? An actual heart doesn't you, look you like this thing that they draw. I just want to share you. this with you all. I remember Princess was telling me that she, because we were talking about, so I homeschool my kids. Uh, we're talking about um, human body, you know, anatomy. And then so, so I was telling them that, you know, just like what your heart looks like. And then she's telling me one night, she said, Mom, I wish that my heart really looks like this. <laughs> so she's so, so sweet. Anyway, so, so Yao Ming's last question is, do you like pets? Yes, because I love cats and I love dogs. What about you? I don't like pets. Um, I will tolerate fish in a bowl with a lid. Oh my God! Let but, him breathe. But no, I, I, I don't. I don't like pets. I'm I'm OCD and I like to do. I like to participate in the cleaning. And I I don't want to clean up behind pets. I got babies. We're, we're potty training bunso. And and then my schedule doesn't allow time for to go walk a pet. I see people on our cameras mm -hmm. uh, walking their pets. And sometimes it's frigid outside. And so I just, I don't have it in me to get up to walk a pet. You may have it in you. I'll get up and check on the babies, but I don't want to get up and go. Oh, do I need to walk them? Yes, you have to walk them. It's it would be it'd be unhumane to keep a dog in a closet and never let no, it go. No, I'm not gonna put them in the closet. I'm, I'm just saying play it's with the, them in it's the, the equivalent. Like just keep them in the house and never let them out. Oh, okay. Well, okay. They, uh, well, that's that's just Final question. So thank you, Yaoming, for that wonderful questions. You're thank awesome. You, Michael. Kiss Say Samara, Samara for us. Yes. Okay. Oh, and also Janella, Norjan. Tell Janella we yes, love her. Yes. Okay, from Rika Bernal. Okay, tanong ko sa inyong dalawa, paano nyo dinidisiplina ang mga anak nyo gayong magkaiba kayo ng kultura? How do we discipline the Zibis being, you know, we have different culture? and different backgrounds well we had different backgrounds but we have the same culture i mean because the culture of this house is a mixture of two cultures which is a dominant the dominant force in this house is the culture that we live by that, that we set the guidelines our backgrounds are different i mean but i don't think our backgrounds the way we were raised were any different i mean we both were disciplined with the hand <laughs> With a whooping. Yeah, so a hand, <laughs> belt, or whatever resources. None of us was or like yelling. Yeah, or yelling. None of us were like drowned or held on the water or electric oh, shock. Goodness, therapy. baby. <laughs> yeah, that stuff you see in the movies. It could be true. Okay. But so um, our backgrounds may be different because we grew up eating different foods. But uh, that's probably the extent of it. As for disciplining the kids, I've always thought that until the kid understands language and understands what they're doing then it's pointless to discipline them only because they don't even speak your language and they don't even understand your your culture your guidance so it makes no sense when they became of age is where they are now i think pinching is probably the best form uh, i remember you would tell me something about the consequences need to outshadow uh, the actions so that they will learn not to do it again and so when it comes to uh, Kuya I struggle disciplining him because he looks so much like me and I know his heart he's just trying to be a boy have fun and play but sometimes he doesn't stop when I want him to stop or something goes a little too. anyway so I struggle disciplining him because I know he's just a kid being a kid but uh, I they're so babies yeah I I Either I'm fed up and I'm disciplining him, which I don't like, or I'm disciplining him because he's demonstrating character that I don't want to grow into adulthood or young adulthood. 
he's demonstrating something that I say, you know what? If he did this as a young adult, there would be consequences outside of the house. So therefore, I'll, I'll actively discipline him for that, whether I'm upset or not. If it, if it, if it makes such an impact that it would cause uh, uh, some sort of action outside of the house, then I, I try to deal with that now so that when he doesn't grow to that point where he thinks it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I won't let him do things in the house that I normally would because society is so harsh on young people of color. So I have to make sure with him, because I can look at him and tell he's going to have my body and he's going to have my wit and he's going to have my determination. And so when I grew up, it was OK because there wasn't so much exposure uh, to calamity, to put it that way, chaos. Um, but now in the, in the world he's growing up in, unless I'm able to change it in the next few years, uh, I, I really need to protect uh, his ambition and kind of sh uh, shield him from doing certain activities or having certain expressions because I don't want the uh, ruling governmental system to try to discipline him uh, despite his good intentions. So he gets disciplined, Princess gets disciplined, and Bunso, when he gets to the point where he understands his language and consequences, he will get disciplined for, you know, uh, things that things that go against social norms. Uh, that's where they'll get disciplined. They won't get disciplined for throwing soft toys and they won't get disciplined for being loud in the house because this is their house. Yeah. So they can be as loud as they want. They can throw toys. They can play soccer in the house. They can ride their bikes in the house. Uh, I'm not worried about the paint on the walls or because we're going to repaint when we sell this place anyway. If we ever sell it, regardless, it'll get repainted in a few years anyway. So they don't get disciplined for riding bikes in the house, being loud. They don't get disciplined for not going to sleep, especially when I know they just had sugar or cakes or juice or whatever. I don't discipline for not taking naps. Um, I do discipline them for intentionally hurting each other. But if it was an accident, I do not discipline them for that because they're kids and they're supposed to play. Yeah. And if Princess can't take a punch from her brother, then then that's too bad because the world is not going to be as gentle as he would. So I, I really don't discipline him for that. I talk to him about it and don't hit girls, you know, start getting this in your mind and all that stuff. And even Bunso, Bunso's too and, and talks a few words and I tell him don't hit girls. That's your baby sister. Make sure you take care of her. And Princess, I tell her, hey, don't antagonize him because then he's going to want to fight. So, but as for uh, putting heavy hands on them for stuff like that, nah, absolutely not. They're kids and I expect them to be kids. I expect us to get trees and them to go out in the backyard and climb trees and get tired and get exhausted and fall out under the tree and take a nap there and have less ruckus in the house. But until then, I expect it to be ruckus in the house. Like I said, uh, they played soccer in the house. If you guys saw the video about Lazy Sunday, you will see them playing soccer in the house with golf clubs. Uh, there's a video that may come out where they learn to ride their bikes in the house. Uh, their bouncy castle usually happens right here in this living room on hot days or very cold days. So they are allowed to play and do things in the house that I couldn't do. I couldn't play basketball in the house, couldn't ride my bike in the house. Granted, my house I grew up in was smaller, but still. Um, uh, I do not allow them to play in the kitchen, irregardless of how big the kitchen is or if any if any pot handles are on and all that. I don't allow any of that. But other than that, I think that we are on the same page about disciplining them. Or maybe I'm just louder about it and I haven't heard your opinion. No, you did. Okay. Then okay. that's that. As they say down south, that's mm. that on that. Okay.